Well, Shemai, my lovely jubblies, how are you all? I haven't read a story for ages because I haven't had any new books. But you know, I treated myself the other day and I love this one. It's called Little Red Reading Hood. And it's by Lucy Rowland and Ben Mantle. And it says, stories can end any way that you please. Now, I love new books because I love the smell of a new book. Mmm which can make me sound a little bit weird, I know. So look, we know this character, don't we? This character is Little Red Riding Hood. Now I'm just thinking that looks a little bit bright. So there we go, let's put the blind down a bit. And there she is, doing all these different things. There she is reading and reading and reading. Do you think she might like reading? Mrs Richards is a bit like this. I've always got a book as well. I have burned many a, f um, a meal because I have been at a really important part of my book. Oh, poor dear, who's this? There's the wolf and he's actually reading as well. Now, I love the illustrations in this book. They look really magical, don't they? Little Red Reading Hood loved reading books. Always curled up inside crannies and nooks. She read in the bathroom, she read on the porch. She read late, late at night by the light of a torch. Flicking through pages, her little head bowed, dreaming up stories and laughing out loud. But one day her mother said, what a to-do? Read this li old library box long overdue, which means she should have taken it back ages ago. You must take it back to the library today. But listen, I've something important to say. Don't ever stray from the path in the wood. Yes, Mum, said Red, and she pulled up her hood. Now, I think we know she's not going to listen to her mammy. I think we know this, don't we? <gasps> Look at the wood. As Red skipped along, it was lovely and sunny. But suddenly Red felt a little bit funny. A wolf jumped in front of her. Gruffly, he said, Where are you taking that book, little red? The library, she answered, to hand it back in. Oh, said the wolf, and he started to grin. Now, a grin is a bit like a smile, but if you're grinning, it isn't, like, it isn't a genuine smile. So when you see someone and you're really happy to see them, you give a genuine smile. He looks like he's got a cunning plan, doesn't he? So he's grinning. He doesn't say he's smiling. The wolf licked his lips and he had a good hunch that little red reading hood might do for lunch. He thought, she looks tasty, a flavoursome treat, and maybe I'll read her book after I eat. The wolf had a plan, so he said with a smile, but why don't you stay here and read for a while? Can you see the signpost? This one's going to the library. This one's going to more trees. What do you think the owl is thinking? I think he's thinking she shouldn't trust him. Do you? Because she's he's leading her off to more trees instead of the library. Red was quite tempted. Her book was so good. So she strayed from the path and she sat in the wood. Ten minutes, she said, as she started to read. And off ran the wolf at a lightning fast speed. Where's he going? He's off to the library. Now, books have all sorts of strange magical powers. And that afternoon, Red was reading for hours. Now, I have found this as well. Mrs Richards might think, one more chapter of my book. And then ten chapters later, and I still haven't done all the jobs I should have done. Meanwhile, at the library, what a barbarian. Wolf had tied up Mrs Jones, the librarian. He had put on her glasses, her colourful smock and said to himself, Red is in for a shock. A few moments later, Red opened the door. Come in, said the wolf with a wave of his paw. Uh-oh. Little Red Reading Hood put her book down and looked at the wolf with a bit of a frown. Are you quite well, Mrs Jones, she inquired. You look a bit different today. Are you tired? And look, she's looking at fairy tales. Red gasped, what big eyes? And then Wolf, with a sneer, said, yes, all the better for reading, my dear. Red said, 
your ears are hairy as well. And what, asked young Red, is that terrible smell? Look, there's all flies around him, he's so smelly. The wolf ripped his smock off and sprang from his seat. Enough, cried the wolf, now I'm ready to eat. You can't eat her up, the librarian blubbered, and with a loud heave she flew out of the cupboard. <gasps> That's su just such an obvious ending, she sighed. We've heard it before. You at least could have tried. The wolf eats the girl up. Well, that's nothing new. What? The wolf puzzled. But that's what wolves do. Wolves are the bad guys, it says in my book. Little Red Reading Hood gave him a look. See, it says, the wolf ate her up in one big gulp. Ha, 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 ha. She sat by the wolf and, despite her unease, said, stories can end any way that you please. You don't like an ending, Red Ride Reading Hood said. Then change it, arrange it again in your head. Just switch it and stitch it up some other way. The wolf nodded slowly and whispered, OK. So look, listen to this. A beanstalk grew up from the crack in the floor. Come on, Snow White shouted. It's time to explore. Does Snow White usually go up the beanstalk? It's usually Jack, isn't it? Peter Pan noticed the fairy dust settle, and now you can fly, he told Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel don't usually fly, do they? What usually happens to them? They get captured, don't they? But they get their own back on the Wicked Witch. So back in her castle, deep under the sea, the mermaid invited the wolf round for tea. Aladdin jumped back and he gave a loud shout as his old fairy godmother tumbled right out. So all these stories are being mixed up, haven't they? He thought for a moment. A book of my own? And this time the wolf won't end up all alone. He picked up a story, a book about shoemaking elves, then started to chuckle and search through the shelves. I found it, he shouted, and danced a few jigs, then borrowed a book about three little pigs. Little Red Reading Hood walked through the wood, the moon shining down on her little red hood. She curled up that night with a book in her hands and dreamt of huge dragons and magical lands. For whilst leaving footpaths should never be done, straying from stories is all sorts of fun. And look, the wolf now is having tea with Red Riding Hood and the three pigs. He's taking the three pigs out swimming and fishing. He's reading them a story. He's taking them camping. He's put them on the front of a bike. Now this pig looks a little bit unsure about this. And then he's having a picnic. So look at that. So you can make up any story you like, can't you? I love that book. Sometimes it's a bit tricky to remind myself as Little Red Reading Hood, not Little Red Riding Hood, because we're so used to use it here in Little Red Riding Hood. Mr. Richard's getting confused now. So thank you for joining me, and I'll see you soon. Hi, bye.